Sugar Blues. I tell you, I can't, can't believe how much better I feel. Mm-hmm. My weight's the lowest it's been in eight years. Isn't that amazing? And you're it's not amazing. really even. I'm not. You're just. It doesn't hurt. It's the weirdest thing of all. Well, you know, know how it is. You feel like, oh, I'm so deprived. I can't go eat, you know, what I want to eat. And right. It's, it's now. It's like my wife says, you want to go to dinner? My first reaction is, no. Because I don't want to be tempted. And, I, and I'm and i not really tempted. I just, I want to be able to find good food to eat when you're out. And that's right. really tough to do. It is. You know, we went to First Watch on Sunday after church. And I and I had what's called the power wrap. Yeah. And it's got turkey and mushrooms. And... It even had the kind of cheese I can have. And I'm like, okay. So while I was eating it, it was really tasty. And then about a half hour later, I felt like crap. There, well, so I know there was something in exactly. there. Exactly. And so then the rest of the day. And then the weird thing is, is my cheat day is Sunday. And I got to stop that because I got to find a better, different cheat day. Because on Monday, I feel so out of whack. Right. So out of, anyway, we maybe we'll get, get into this while we're chatting today. Yeah. Hello, two people that are watching. Uh, as always, put your comments up in the uh, comment section and we'll see those and then we will answer those questions. Are you ready, Claudia? I am. Of Here course. We go. Good Health by Claudia podcast with me, Denny Schaefer, a production of Denny Radio. It is episode 15. Yay. All right. We're getting yeasty <laughs> once again. All right. We're going to talk about systemic yeast overgrowth, a conversation that you and all your pros uh, talk about all day all long day at the long. store because most of us are dealing with fungal overgrowth, right. which sounds really gross having that in our bodies. It's an imbalance. Uh, we don't realize it. It right. always is called something else. Yeah. Now, I want to go through this list that you sent me. Chronic anything, infections of the sinus, ear, throat, urinary, vaginal, respiratory, skin, bowel, nails, jock itch dandruff headaches brain fog gas bloat allergies these are just a few of the things that claudia has discovered and witnessed and she's also seen the improvement by addressing the fungal issue overtaking our human body so right. we're going back to this why because it's so important it's so important could you imagine how it would change people if they could actually look inside oh my and goodness. see the grossness of the yeast and the fungus overgrowth in all of us do you think that would you know wake people up well we always talk about that at the store as a team if people could see really what was going on in there with the fungus and the parasites and the you know the bacteria out of control and you got the viruses out of so People does every, everybody, everybody has uh, that in them? Parasites? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean. Worms? To some degree. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's fair to say that in this culture, because we were the first culture to have industrial refined food, right? Yeah. It didn't exist on the planet until it started in the United States. So, uh, you know, you've got to remember after World War II, you had you know, the industrial food was coming up with all the sugar and, and everything else in it, mm -hmm. petrotoxins, heavy metals, all the stuff. And, and so all this junk is coming up and especially back in the sixties, I've mentioned this before, you know, women were starting to get into the workforce. So they were, they, they weren't nursing like they were for thousands of years. And of course, the soy industry, you know, they always start a campaign between some food industry and the Western medical industry. So that that campaign, encouraging women that they, you know, telling them they didn't have to nurse, just give everybody a soy formula. Well, there's two really devastating parts to that conversation. That was the first time when the flora, the good bacteria, everything we're talking about, the good guys, they have to be passed through breast milk. All mammals pass flora through breast milk to the young. That's how it enters the body. So you had millions of babies that weren't being nursed, and you had millions of babies being raised on a soy formula. Well, there's no, there's no human gut that was designed to properly digest soy milk, especially the way it's produced in the United States. So all of these things have you know, over the decades, they've all added up. And now we have, I truly believe in act, actually, uh, Dr. Trowbridge and Dr. Walker, we're going to be talking about the yeast syndrome today. Um, great book. 
they both said, and this book was written in 1985 uh, or six, I think it is. And, you know, they, they said back in this book, it's epidemic, 1986. So in 86, they were saying it was an epidemic. What is it now? Well, exactly. It's worse. It's much worse, much, so much is, worse. And, and, and I don't want to go down this rabbit trail if you don't want to, but it's a question that just popped into my head. And by the way, if you have any questions, uh, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, put it, put your questions in the comment section and we'll get to those. Is it safe to say that part of the biggest problems that we have with commercial food or whatever name you have for it right. is because of all the chemicals and preservatives. So it has a longer shelf life. Exactly. So these big companies can make money, not really caring what it does to the human body. Exactly. So that's it in I a mean, nutshell. I mean, that's a very honest statement. Okay. Now, the makers the makers of food and the wow. Western medicine might not like that, but at the end of the day, lots of people understand it's not about the health of the public. It's about the money that's being made because remember, everything was started as a business. It was all a business. And that goes back, that's why I always talk about the Titan. I don't think I brought the book today, but we're going to go over that book one of these days. But that's why I encourage over the years, read that. Because when you understand how, especially the industry of pharmaceuticals was created, it was a, it was a business to make profit. So it was, it was looked at as philanthropy, but <laughs> philanthropy is when you give and you don't expect something in return. But the return was only pharmaceutical research could be done in the schools that they were rebuilding. And so that's the, you know, you have a camaraderie between the industrial food that was being produced and the business of Western medicine. So anyone, you know, there's a lot of books on this history, a lot. I talk about the Titan a lot because I love that book. Is it camaraderie but, between the two or is it in cahoots? Whatever you want to say. It grew together. And, and okay. of course, it's all based on sickness. So to your point, when we look at pasteurization of dairy, which at the time it happened, it, you know, they didn't understand. They were trying to understand bacteria and things they couldn't see with the naked eye. And, and a big part of what came before us it's fair to say, when we look at cultures before us, there were sanitation issues. And that's why a lot of what they were doing, it was based on sanitation because millions of people were getting sick from different bacteria and such things. But, and that's a good conversation, but that's a, that's a different, it's part of this, but that's a whole other thing on its okay. own. But the point is this, industrial food, and you said it, it was, it had a longer shelf life. So when you look at the history of margarine being produced that was a big you know a, a, a why it came into the american food supply butter is a beautiful food but it goes rancid so when they started hydrogenating and using these altered you know whatever petro fats whatever you want to call them it gave that product a longer shelf life so it's always been based on money and actually and i was just telling a, i just was talking to a doc about this we had a great conversation we were talking about the history of margarine because i've got a book on the socioeconomic history of margarine and it, it's a fascinating history but my issue is when all these things come in the market they may not know how dangerous or toxic they are but my issue is once businesses do they don't pull this stuff off the market they just keep it there and millions of people are being exposed to it or eating it or whatever it might be so that's where the issue of they're making profit over the human health and that's a sad thing so Got at it. any rate okay so let's talk about fungus so uh this book i want to tell you the quick story about how this so this book came out and the year it came out Joe Bassett, I always talk about Joe and Pat Bassett. I love them dearly. They're my mentors. I'm grateful that I started learning from them at 16. Their store was iconic. Um, it, it not only is, you know, in, the, in our uh, state, but in our city, but around the country, because they were fighting the fight to protect the rights of Americans to be able to access supplements. I mean, this has been a strong, this has been a battle over the years. And that's another conversation we'll have we'll go over the history of what it's taken to preserve the right of supplements to be in the marketplace and the education to go with them but at any rate so joe bassett 
was a good friend of Dr. Terry Chapel. And for those of you in our neck of the woods, you probably know that name, Dr. Chapel. He's still living. He's a wonderful man. He's retired. He was really one of the original functional medical doctors 50 some years ago. He was doing nutritional support 50 some years ago. His office, his practice was in Bluffton and Joe and he were good friends. Well, Dr. Chapel and Dr. Trowbridge were good friends. So Joe meets Dr. Trowbridge through Dr. Chapel, and he brings the book back to the store and he says, hey, I want you to read this book. Let me know what you think about it. So I read it and I said to both Pat and Joe at that time, this is an amazing book because it made sense to me right off the bat. The whole book is about when the good bacteria is depleted, then the bad guys are up. I call them the critters because okay. remember, the good flora, probiotics, good bacteria, whatever you want to call them, those are the good soldiers for the immune system. Everybody thinks of them just as digestive support. Well, they are, but they remember everything starts in the gut. We say this all day long because we got to get people to understand the brain starts in the gut. Yes, it does. The immune system starts in the gut. The endocrine system that produces hormones that regulates the body, it all starts in the gut. So you better take care of your gut. Otherwise, chaos is going to If the unfold. gut's right, everything else will be right. Exactly. So when the flora is down, and remember, those women in the 60s, many of them didn't nurse their babies. And so generations later, we are seeing so many small children loaded with overgrowth of yeast. I mean, it's unbelievable what we're seeing, but we're seeing it in all ages in many different ways. That's why when I wrote that list, if you're dealing with chronic infections of a lot of stuff. So here's the deal with fungus. This is why, so we're talking specifically about candida and ca candida is a strain of yeast that grows in the body. It's naturally occurring in the body. It's in there. It's okay. part of us. Okay. And but it's meant to be kept in check with the good guys, with the good flora. So candida is a very, very opportunistic strain. It's in the fungi family. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking a lot about fungi. Fungi. So we the other couple of weeks ago we talked about the good fungi. Now we're talking about the not so good fungi. So the it's interesting with fungal overgrowth. Yeast grows, it's called dimorphic, meaning it morphs. It changes. It has two stages. So when it's in the body being happily fed, and here's the thing, it's fed, fed by three main things. Oh, here we go. Write these down, people. This it, is good. It's fed mainly by anything that turns into sugar. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. It's bad. It's fed by synthetic estrogen. Do I have to worry about that? Well, it's in the food supply. So remember, when we talk about petrotoxins, which we're going to do next week. Is that why I have man boobs? That's why men are getting, and they're getting breast cancer, and they're getting oh, hot, yeah. you know, sure. night sweats, hot flashes. We see boys developing breasts. We have all these women with all these issues, endometrial issues. You know, it's affecting breast tissue. Men are getting prostate issues. And then, of course, we're seeing children. We're seeing little girls start their periods way too soon. Mm. And it's very sad. They're, they're developing too quickly. So it's in the food supply. All these things are in the food supply. So, and the third thing it's fed by is antibiotics, which are in the food supply. So even if someone has never taken an antibiotic for an infection, which is very rare to find. In fact, I don't know if they can even find that anymore. But those are the three things feeding it. Anything that turns into a sugar. And remember, that includes you know, bread and pasta and, you know, grains turn into sugar. Anything got, with carbs. Exactly. Potatoes and, you know, alcohol. And nope. you've got people, you know, eating all the sugar and the candy and the donuts and the biscuits and the muffins and the whatever. Sugar is the big criminal. Yes. Because all, so here's what's interesting. So the, 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 the yeast has two forms when it's in its budding form, you know, it's, it's a mound and it's being fed it's happy. Okay. But when it's not happy, then it creates what they call hyphae, which is a, you know, it's a root, it's a tentacle, it's a, it pierces. So it literally pierces into the mucosal lining, which is the wet tissue, 
in the elementary canal. It's all, you know, it's the mouth. It's, it's all wet tissue. And that's where it's piercing. And it can also pierce into cellular membrane. Dr. Trowbridge talks about all this in this book. So it's Is it easy book. to understand? It's easy to understand. Yes. And here's the thing. There have been many other yeast books that have come on the market. We stock this one. We continue to stock it. We always will. Um, I think it's 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 easy enough to understand, but it gets the point across. And they've done a great job. Now, this book was never revised. OK, so this is the original. This is the original. Some of them are newer. And uh, but at any rate. So that's the thing with fungus. OK, so I got a question from Denise. OK. And she's put a bunch of comments here. So hopefully this will continue the conversation. Okay. I, I don't want to go down a rabbit trail. She okay. started out with too old i'm thinking she's talking about the book is too old because it's 86 that's okay she says she i bought that. it i couldn't read it i'm a retired rn and we count on research less than five years old so the research okay is older than that she okay. goes on to say i came for dr cass he called me mrs fungus i came <laughs> for silver biotics loved them Good. both silver biotics turned me around from sibo is that what that yeah. is yeah i don't know what that is See. Yeah. Uh, she agrees with you, Claudia, so, except for the yeast book. Okay, that's okay. And, and, I, and got, I honor she, that. And she's got a master's in nursing. My yep. students were never allowed old studies, only five years or less. We need current studies on this. Oh, they're out there. There's a ton Are of they? them. But here's, here's the thing. Here's what I just want to say, and I appreciate what you're saying. Well, she just said, no, it's not. I have no idea what you're talking. Are you talking no, about not. what? Are you talking about the book? Because she, you mentioned Titan and I wasn't sure which book she was talking about. So I'm pretty sure she's talking about. the. Okay. So book. anyway, go ahead. Carter. Anyway, here's the thing. You see some of the protocols now, you know, Dr. Trowbridge created a very easy, there's four, an elimination diet. It was four phases. Phase one was strictly animal protein and veggies. And after a few weeks, you moved to phase two. They were starting to introduce foods, different foods. There was potatoes and melon and whatever else is on there. They started to introduce slowly. And so, and then there was phase three and phase four. So over the years, that's how we did it. We were teaching people find new trigger foods through this elimination protocol. And it helped many, many people. And, you know, now I always say the American people want to simplify everything. They over want, they always want to oversimplify. So I've had people bring me in different pieces, uh, articles and, you know, from docs and other people that are uh, creating this protocol and they're allowing people to eat fruit right off the get go. I personally disagree with that. So I, I you know, this is a great book and I respect what you're saying. She doesn't, like the, of, she doesn't like the small print. And that's okay. There's a lot of research out there. I just, we stick to this because, you know, we've sold hundreds and hundreds of this book. It's helped a lot of people. That's why we do it. So, uh, but at any rate. Nor here, nor there. We're moving on. But so, um, but I'm glad the silver helped you too. It's a wonderful, wonderful product. Oh so, man, I use the silver on all, yeah. everything. Man. So anyway, when, when the fungus is not happy, when you're not feeding it, now it starts invading. It invades tissue. It mm. invades cells. That, is that a good thing? Well, no, because but, that's how it, that's why it's called systemic. But if you're not feeding overgrowth. it with the garbage you're eating, do you ever get to a point where you kill it or whatever? Or is you're it balancing always... it. Remember, okay, we're, we're looking for balance. To balance. Okay, we're looking for Health balance. is based on balance. You're never going to get rid of all the candida. In fact, you know, they've done research on sterile mice. They use them in research. It's not how it's meant to be. The world in us has both good stuff and the not so good stuff. But the issue is when we have enough flora, it keeps everything in balance. So flora is the key. Flora is the key. Is that with a good probiotic? And so, yes. And that's why probiotics are so important. And that's why we encourage people take them every single day. Every day. We had a customer, this was a few weeks ago, some doctor she was listening to told her, told he was saying that people are, uh, can get too many probiotics and they can become dangerous. And I'm thinking, that is the most ridiculous comment I've ever heard. And never in my life have I heard anybody say that. So the point is, there's lots of things going on out in the world. I know what I was trained in. I know what I've witnessed over 49 years of hundreds of thousands of people. So we teach people, take your probiotics, make sure they're good quality, take them every day, because most people will come back and say, man, I feel so much better. 
because they're helping immune digestive brain endocrine. So they're very important. Do you need pre and pro? Well, that's interesting. I got to tell you. So when prebiotics first came out on the market, I said to our buyer, ah, we're not bringing in those products. It's just more that companies just want to come up with new stuff and want us to sell it. But the more I learned about prebiotics, now I understand why in this time period, in this culture, people need prebiotics. Here's why. If we look pre-industry, we go back and look at cultures before us, they were eating the prebiotics naturally in their food source. They were eating fibrous food. And that's what feeds the good guys. In the United States, especially decades later of depleted, a depleted food source. And remember, that's part of refinement. They're stripping all the fiber out. Well, if you strip all the fiber out, that's why they most people need prebiotics. They need the, you know, there's chicory and there's different things they're using. It actually feeds the colonization in the intestinal tract. So I do, now that I understand them, I think they're important. So should I be on a prebiotic? You are in that multi I gave, or the, the Pro? um, probiotic I gave It's in you. there. It's in there. It's so free and pro. Brent, yeah, so Brenda Watson does... 60 billion colonization, um, 60 strains, 60 ac billion activity, and seven prebiotics in every probiotic she makes. Oh, okay. And it's in one capsule a day, and it's enteric coated. So remember, it's designed to not break down from the stomach acids. It's going to break down deep in the intestinal tract. And that's something I want to, you know, we always remind people, you got to remember from, from mouth to, you know, when you stand up, mouth to rectum in most people is what? Two, two and a half feet, maybe in a tall guy, it looks like three feet. But when you uncoil the intestinal tract, the average length is 26 to 30 feet. Wow. That's a long tube. That's a very long tube. So you think about people are eating refined, sugary, mushy, pasteurized, compromised food and you got all these nooks and crannies in the intestinal tract how's it going to get out of there right so we know that people and that's why so many people are dealing with constipation they're all clogged up no and it's funny i learned years ago i'll just tell you this real quick when we when i first started the store and we were open probably a couple of years and this guy he came and we were you know educated him on yeast free uh yeast overgrowth and uh anyway he when we were talking when i was talking to him about the digestion uh, this is when I learned to use a great analogy because he said to me, well, he says, I'm a plumber. And if I put 26 to 30 feet of plumbing from the bottom of somebody's sink to the floor, he said, I'd be a millionaire because everybody would be calling me because they would have a clogged drain. And I laughed. I said, that is a great analogy. So when you look at it that way, all that plumbing in there, that's why it's so important to go back to whole, clean real food. And of course, I always tell people, my mother raised my brothers and I, she always said, stick to the food that God put here. And that simply means food before factories. She kept it that simple for us. And to this day, we all eat very clean. We've never, you know, we've never junked out. So right. uh, we got some products here we want to show everybody. So we've got, Before we do that, though, I want yes. to ask you two things. First off, one, one's a comment. It took us to get to 15 episodes before you ever uttered the word rectum. So congratulations. <laughs> we finally worked it into a podcast. <laughs> well, and you can emphasize vaginal. So, you know, know there we go. That's, what that's a funny do? word. It's a funny <laughs> word to me. All right. So here it is. Is there a yeast overgrowth test other than feeling lousy and having all these issues? There is. Is there a test where you can take it? Because uh, sadly, I've been conditioned, like probably most people watching and listening, is just give me a test. Tell me what's wrong with me and how do I fix so, it? So, a couple different so things. So, is there a test? Yes. There's a lot of self-tests. Dr. Trowbridge has one in his book. There's hundreds of symptoms he lists. Uh, you'll see other pieces of literature with self-tests. But there are stool there's stool samples that they take. Um, but, but again, I, again, I can only speak from my own experience. I, I can't speak for anybody else out in the world. We've seen people come to us. They were told that they didn't have a fungal over, a, 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 did, nothing showed it in the stool, but they were loaded with symptomatic expression of fungus. So I, I don't know. So I just always encourage people. If you, if you're craving sugar and you're craving carbs and you can't get away with them, you know, get away from them. 
it's a smart thing to consider addressing it as a fungal overgrowth. And again, after hundreds of thousands of people and witnessing it, witnessing it, I mean, mm -hmm. it's incredible what we've witnessed when people get on a yeast-free protocol. So um, we've seen amazing things. All right, so. let's get to the products okay, here now, because we is, are flying by okay, with so today's this is what episode. I wanna, so this is what I want to tell everybody. Okay. And I'm going to use the analogy because I we raised three boys. Okay, so the fungus growing in everybody has a has what we call a biofilm a wall around it and yeah. i always use the analogy a biofilm is like having a spaceship with a shield around it okay you got to break down the shield to get to the spaceship okay this is why the fungus our immune system can't get to it because it's got that protective bio shield around it which is mainly cellulose so we don't produce enzymes in our body to digest cellulose that's why we don't eat trees and you know a lot of different cellulose based plants so this product this is called here you show it so this is a great product this is called candidase we've sold it many many years it was the first one on the market that i'm aware of we've been selling it i don't even know how many years well probably almost i don't even know when the product came out 25 eight years ago 30 years ago whatever it is it's a great product it's a plant enzyme so it's very simple and it's the enzyme cellulase so cellulase digests cellulose. So when you take this product on an empty stomach, always empty stomach, over time, it's enzymatically digesting, you know, it's eating away that fungal biofilm and it weakens it. And once we weaken it, then we use other antifungals, natural antifungals to help the body really address it, to help the immune system really address it. So candidase is a great product. It says on the label to start with six a day. We don't start anybody with six a day. We start them with one every day for a week, and then we go to two every day for a week. And, you know, from there, if somebody wants to increase it faster or slower, you're working up to three in the morning, three in the evening, empty stomach. Now, Candex is another great product that came out after this one, this family-owned company, and they do a great job too. There's a couple more plant enzymes in there, but you can either look for Candex or Candidase. So uh, they're both wonderful. And, and what we've learned over the years, because before we had these products, we would address fungal overgrowth with a lot of the classic, you know, potiarco, caprylic acid, grapefruit seed extract. That's what we had on the market. And we'd see people get sick from their own toxins. That's what we call the Herxheimer reaction. So it's in the book. It was named after the researcher that discovered that. Anyway, we've worked over the years to help people reduce that Herxheimer reaction because you know, people need to work and have raise their families and go to school and whatever they're doing. And before we had these products on the market, we'd start people on, you know, for some pretty powerful natural anti-fungal herbals and all these other things. And they worked, but the host would get, a, <laughs> they didn't feel so great. So now what we do is we start by breaking down the biofilm, then down the road, we start adding in. So other... you wouldn't take both of these same time. No, one or the other. Just, yes, right, these are the just other. two different companies. Okay. Some people like one better than the other. Um, and but after somebody's been on this for three, four months or whatever it is, then we start adding in. This product's been around many, many years. And if you see what it says on there, there's caprylic acid, potiarco, and grapefruit seed extract. So. These are the these are the well known, well documented natural antifungal uh, herbs that really help address the overgrowth. But what we've learned is if you break down the biofilm first, then these work more efficiently, and you know you'll feel better doing it that way. So this is a great product. Also, you always start with the biofilm for the, months on the biofilm. Yeah, and, and then you, you switch. To yes, this. and then or and add, again add this with it. Yes, a okay. lot of people will do it now. Some people stop after, you know, everyone's different. We had a guy that came to us load, head to toe. He was sent to us from a doc. We have a lot of docs that refer to us, which we're very grateful. And he had eczema, whatever, psoriasis, head to toe. Mm. And we immediately put him on a yeast-free diet. And after he was on the candidase, uh, probably four months, and he was improving beautifully. We had him on probiotics and, of course, good fats and, you know, essential fatty acids and all these other things. Um, but he stop the candidates well he 
it it started coming back a little bit and so he ended up as an individual staying on that product for about eight months Mm. does everybody need it that long no but remember we're teaching people human applied nutrition this is what i how i'm trained this is how people like me are trained it's not about one size fits all it's to the individual human applied nutrition is to the individual needs so the candidates you're not going to be on forever it's not going to be a daily supplement correct how do you know when it's time to get off well here's the thing so when you're balancing flora you've got to bring up the good guys you've got to weaken the fungus and you got to change the diet because people i've seen we've had people over the years they spent hundreds of dollars on supplements but didn't want to change their diet it doesn't work you got to do it all together because what ha- that's what i was saying earlier see that's what i've been doing pretty much my whole life since i met you 25 years ago yeah i take all the supplements yeah and i didn't change my diet so i didn't have the kind of you know the right. kind of results so, that we'd want to have and now that i am exactly. eating to my blood type taking supplements it's amazing. My weight is down the lowest it's been in eight years. That's awesome. And I feel better and, than and I've ever ha- felt. Yeah. And you feel good doing that's it. That's the part. It, that's the whole point. We've Yay seen me. People, yeah. You're doing a great job. I tell you, I'm proud Thank of you. I always you. tell you that. I'm proud of you good. because like- it comes down to the commitment of the individual. We're just here to guide. Right. It's got to come down to the individual. But what I wanted to say earlier, when, when, when that, when a fungus, when you stop feeding it, if you don't have the supplemental support. Oh, that's important. Right. So now it starts, you know, it starts infiltrating through the tissue, which is not good. It's damaging cellular membrane. It's damaging mucosal tissue. It gets into the blood. That's why it's called systemic. So that's the cravings. It's seeking. It needs to be fed. It's looking for a sugar. And one other thing I want to say about it, it's very interesting. When it's in its mound-like shape it 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 has it it produces sugar fermenting chemicals so this is why a lot of people bloat they don't understand why they bloat so if you're feeding a fungus and it's happy well a lot of people are constantly bloated because it's fermenting the sugar that they just ate does that make sense yes yeah exactly so that's why years ago you see people that used to bake bread they'd put a little sugar in the yeast starter it fed it it helped the bread rise. So the bloat is part of what's, it's really from the, a big part of it is from the fungus. Now parasites can cause that too, but mainly it's, we've seen it's the fungal issue. So it's doing it all together. It's bringing, it's using the supplement, starting with probiotics and breaking down the biofilm and then changing what you're eating. And we always encourage people do a yeast free diet through your blood type. So you're an example of, you know, what doesn't feed yeast is good quality protein and veggies and good fats. Okay. Everything else feeds it. So we learned years ago when the Atkins uh, protocol was around. And of course, we were already teaching people about yeast. Well, we'd see people that were on the Atkins protocol, husband and wife, let's say, one was feeling great, losing weight without trying, brain fog was gone, joint, uh, you know, joint uh, inf- inflammation was reducing, all this stuff was getting better. But the next, the, the other one was eating the same diet, but they were getting bloated and fatigued and tired. Well, years later, the Eat Right for the Blood Type came out. And because right. I've known so many of these customers for so many years, I actually went back and asked some of those customers, you're not an A blood type, are you? And they were all A blood types. They could not handle red meat, all the red meat and the high, the high protein levels. So that's why we teach people do a yeast free approach through your blood type. Okay. All right. Amy says she can attest to the candidate. She's been on it for years. Wonderful product. Suzanne says, love listening to you. Such great information. Thank Claudia. you. Thank all you. Right, we got Thank a few more everyone. products here before we wrap okay, it up. Okay. So I just wanted to show grapefruit seed extract, which is okay. actually in the yeast cleanse, but a lot of people use this product separately. Uh, it seems to help a lot of people that deal with uh, sinus issues. Um, oh, that's me. So this is grapefruit seed extract, wonderful antifungal properties. So I just wanted to bring another tool and it also comes in a liquid, which a lot of people use this. Um, they put a couple drops in water, they'll drink it. Some people actually clean their veggies with it. People do a lot of stuff with this. So 
So that's what I wanted to show. Next week, we're going to talk about the impact of petrotoxins because that's part of what's feeding fungal issues. Antibiotics, man-made estrogen, which is petro, sugar. Those are the three things that feed it. So if you, you know, really wrap your arms around your health, you pull, you pull all these things together, starting with the probiotic, you do, you know, the candidase is a wonderful product or the candex, you start incorporating all these things, eat according to your blood type and don't eat the foods. What mainly feeds, now there's other things. I want to say this real quick. Mushrooms, not, not the type we were talking about. Okay, that's medicinal activity. You're taking them in a different form. But when people are eating a lot of different mushrooms in their food, mushrooms are known to feed fungus. Peanuts and peanut butter are known to feed fungus. So I always tell A blood types, you're an A. Peanuts and peanut butter are on your beneficial list under nuts and seeds. Right. I know. But I always I tell say, wait a I always tell A's go a month or two without any peanuts or peanut butter. Okay. Then put it back in and let your body tell you what it thinks of the peanuts. Some people can do it. A lot of people can't because they're fungal. So, you know, aged cheese feeds fungus because it's moldy. It's aged. Mm. That's why beer, wine, all those things. So at any rate, there's a lot of things that feed it. Uh, usually it's what everybody loves. You know, pickles feed it and all this stuff. So, oh, Suzanne wants to know what's a great probiotic you would recommend? Well, I, I didn't and I didn't bring one because we but. Uh, I, I'm a fan of uh, Brenda Watson, Vital Flora, great company. Uh, Solaray makes a refrigerated line, all enteric coated, uh, which is important to get to the deep bowel. Um, the, uh, microbiome, they have a whole line of them. They're wonderful. Gyro makes great ones. Uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of Megafood makes some very good ones, but Mega and Flora makes some very good ones, but they're a different form. They're meant to be taken with food. So the, most people need that enteric coated to get it deep, deep, deep. But there's a lot of good quality. I just happen to be a fan of the enteric coated. All right. Tell everybody what we're doing next. Oh, wait, before that, uh, if you just joined us or if you want to get the podcast, uh, I will put it in MP3 form. I edit it down and it's an audio and it'll be posted on Claudia's site by Monday. So that way you can share that, share this video, of course, anytime you want. Great information. So let's uh, let's uh, get the podcast numbers up because we uh, we want to reach as many people as possible. It's yeah. very very important. And every week it's literally growing, has we're... changed my life. And if you know me, I'm a I'm a stubborn, you know, <laughs> and it takes a lot for me to change. And I'll tell you what, I I, I had somebody talk to me at the dentist uh, this week. I went in for a checkup. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love you and Claudia together on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the the Facebook Live is just wonderful. I love so, that. Thank I you. do too. All well, right. So you, next everybody. week, what are we doing? And so, then last. So word. next week, um, and I just want one last thing. I want to show. This is a great book. We still stock it. I love some of the old books. Uh, actually, I love a lot of the old books. So uh, the Sugar Blues, they really truly do create the blues. So at any rate, we'll talk about that another time. But um, so next week, we're going to talk about the impact of of petroleum because it's everywhere in our life. And it's, you know, it's nothing, we can't avoid it, but we're all being exposed to it and we're, our health is being challenged by it. And of course, you know, Western medicine doesn't talk about these things. They're not talking about the impact of food, the impact of the environment on us. And I think it's very important conversation. So, and because it's part of what feeds this, that's why I thought we'd continue next week and talk about petrotoxins. Okay. And I'm going to bring different products that will help the body deal with them. That is awesome. Good. All right. Like always, Claudia, all right. you get the last word. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we love all the beautiful comments that we're getting and uh, very much appreciate it. I honor everybody that's embracing their health because I always tell people you can't you can't. You can't depend on anyone else to do it for you. We have to do it for ourselves through our own heart, our own knowledge, our own wisdom, and because we care. We care about us. We care about our family. And, and frankly, the American children need us. We've done them a huge injustice. We've allowed them all to be raised on a compromised food source, and all they do is get drugged. It's unfair. It's shameful. I've talked about it for many, many years. I'm going to continue to talk about it. So changing what we eat, changing what we're using on our body, all these things make a difference. So embrace your health because it's a beautiful, you know, I always say when people reclaim their health, they reclaim their life. So we honor all of you. Thank you so much. Shine your light. Share your love. 
and uh, keep the faith. Peace. <laughs>